Good evening, everyone. Uh, sorry to join you so late. Oh my God, it's 9.20. Uh, I was going to do this at 9.11. But look, here, I want to do the second episode with you um, about Jupiter and Saturn and new moons between 1941 and 2021. And I want to look and show you the new moon when it happens and then show you the event after the new moon. I think this would be even easier to understand how things really work with these new moons and we could look at how personalized this particular new moon is to the 9-11 attack when George W. Bush was the President of the United States. So I'm going to zoom up this up here. We have the new moon in Taurus and it's Jupiter and Saturn and then we have Venus as well just right there which you have the two beneficiaries there. You got Venus which is the great aunt with the gift and then Jupiter, um, who also is a gift giver as well. And then Saturn, which is the care that goes after the gift. Then we have Sun as well. We have Sun at 7 degrees Gemini and Mars at 17 degrees Gemini with an ascendant Virgo at 21 degrees. It's a, it's a fascinating chart to look at. Um, and then now let's zoom right to the date here. Here is the date, November 11th, 8.46 a.m. On this report, I want to show you the, tr the uh, planetary travel and the horizon line between the two impacts of the um, airliners into the towers. We have Saturn at 14 degrees, Gemini. We have the moon at 28 degrees. Uh, we have a conflict between the moon and Mars. And then we have Jupiter with the conflict with Mercury. And when I say conflict on these, the uh, Jupiter is conflict uh, Mercury in Libra. And Mercury is conjunct the Ascendant. Uh, the Mercury rules the twins. And then we have Sagittarius down here. Uh, this is the second house. And here's Mars. In Capricorn as well, and Mars is going to be across from the Moon and the North and the North Node of the chart. The Midhaven is straight up and down. You got the Midhaven there, right? Cancer and the Libra. You got the cardinal signs. We have Cancer in the uh, on the on the on the uh, in, on the Midhaven. You got Minuali -e Quali. Sorry, I can't, I can't pronounce that. I'm bad with that. But yeah, on the Midhaven we have Cancer. We have Jupiter on the Midhaven. Of the at the time of the attack, which is Libra, and I always notice Libra when you look at Libra, um, and that's why this is one of the reasons why I think Libra, um, it's like the symbology of of Saturn and Libra together, Saturn and Venus together. Excuse me, but when you have Saturn and Venus together, Venus Saturn would be holding the dish, right? Saturn is the dish, and then the fruit that sits in the measuring cup, and then Maybe the scale is over, uh, like the, the scale has been turned over and now the, now it's being weighed. And then you have Scorpio there as well. But I'm looking at this right here um, with Mercury. Mercury being the, um, the planet that rules the twins. But um, we have to look at Mercury as being the communication, finance, uh, the trade. Um, and then what we have here, excuse me. We have Mercury sextile as Chiron, and then we have once again Mars in Capricorn right there opposite the Moon. Now, when we put this together with George Bush's President George W. Bush, when we put that together with his his chart, now look at his chart. He's got a Uranus in Gemini. With the North Node there at 20 degrees, he has a Sun in Cancer, Saturn and Can Saturn and Cancer 26 degrees. He's actually born on my birthday, which is 7:26, which is kind of odd, but there's no coincidences. And we have says we have a he's right there on the, the ascendant of Leo. He has Venus in, uh, Venus in the first house, and then Mars. Now let's look at the attack. Now here's what the attack. We have Saturn bringing 
limitations to his Uranus. We have the moon. The moon is right there for the moment. We can look at the um, the transits here in red. I will bring this up for you and then scroll down so we can read this really quick here. And this is really uh, the way to do this. So you can see the numbers, right? When you're looking at these numbers, I'm just going to pull this out just a little bit here. Okay, here we are. And just one more time, so we can see both the chart and this, and the, and the uh, n numbers. So, with Ascendant Leo, the attack is Libra, once again. So the attack would be in his third house of communications, and then Mercury would be, where you see Mercury here at 14 degrees, it would be conjunct in transiting his natal moon. And... Then he would be running into um, Jupiter as well because Mercury is at 14 degrees, the Moon's at 16 and 18. That's four degrees between all those planets right there. So that's that's very um, that's a very key point. But you have to look at the ascendant. Attack would be Venus at the ascendant of the attack. You have Venus and Saturn, right? So when you go over to Saturn, which is one of the ruling planets for the attack, you have Saturn conjoin Uranus. And then, when you look at Uranus over here, um, and look where Venus is. Venus, Uranus is in Aquarius, George's seventh house. Um, and Aquarius is on his ascendant. Neptune is right there, opposing George. And Neptune is a planet that rules the fuel that propels the plane, you know? And it's in retrograde motion. And uh, Uranus is sitting... At 21 degrees, which is opposing George's Saturn or George's Venus. You know, as I said, this is a Venus. Venus is an important planet, and we have Venus right close to George's Venus, right? Look at transit Venus and George, and this is at the moment of the attack. This is very important to look at. Uh, the star of Bethlehem would have happened just right over here in 22 degrees Taurus. So, so Saturn is only left there, and Saturn is just catching up with Uranus. But Jupiter has to conjunct the Sun, right? The Cancer is um, George is the Cancer. Jupiter will be 11 degrees. The the Jupiter will be at 11 degrees Cancer, and George is a sun in Cancer with a Leo ascendant. You know, he's got a nice haircut, what have you. That's Leo, right? And he's, and he's got the Cancer trait, and he's got probably the marvelous eyes, what have you. And then and you have Jupiter there, right? Jupiter. And what is Jupiter doing? Uh, Jupiter is sitting there at 11 degrees, and you just pick off the numbers, right? He's conjunct the sun. So he's talking right to the sun. And then the moon... The moon is at 16 degrees of Libra, right? Where's Jupiter at? 11 degrees Cancer. So that's that's going to be that's going to be a square as well, right? You look at that. You know, he's setting off the moon. To, he's setting off a square to both the moon and Jupiter down and, and Libra, which is the other cardinal sign. Remember, this Libra is very important because it's the scales. And then we look at Gemini, Gemini and the moon. The moon is in the natal moon, which goes around your chart every like 28 days. So when the moon is in Libra over 16, if the moon is at Libra at 16 degrees, we will see a natal start of the lunar cycle for the moon. And when the when you when you look where the moon is, in the progression of that of that lunar cycle, it's in Gemini, and what does Gemini rule? Um, rules communications, short distance traffic communications. You got Saturn here, which can be the Green Grim Reaper. He's known to be the Green Grim Reaper, and he's conjuncting. He's he is conjunct Uranus, and what did he do to Uranus? He took his little sickle, sickle, and he said, "No more for you," because he was impregnating the Earth with all these creatures and these things, and he wouldn't let let the Earth give birth. And Saturn came along. And basically save the Earth, right? But I'm not saying that Saturn is here saving the Earth on this very moment. 
but he Saturn is in Gemini, which is the two twins, the two brothers, like in the books of Notre Dame, right? And Uranus is the explosion at the top of the towers of the planes crashing into him. It's Gemini, right? Uh, and he, he, George, is a Cancer, and this is in his twelfth. This is in his eleventh house of hopes, wishes, dreams, and the future. And here's Saturn, and here's the Moon as well. Uh, the moon is going to be, I'm pretty sure the moon is going to be, oops, went to the wrong chart. Where did he go? Sorry, I just lost the chart. Well, where did he go? He's hiding from me. Okay. This is what happens when you turn, turn the lock on the tablet the wrong way. Okay, use the declaration of pendants. Yeah, here we go again. Sorry. I was looking for the right window so I could look down here. See, it just did this to me again. It went the wrong way. Okay, and then back over here, here we are. I wanted to go over here and scroll this one so it doesn't scroll the other side. Say, I just did it again. Okay, really quick here. All right, here we are. Sorry about that. I didn't hope I didn't make you dizzy. Okay, here we go. But this is a very serious attack. And here we have Mars here in Capricorn. Mars is at one degree Capricorn, which would be setting off an angle at the transit sun, where the transit sun would be at 18 degrees Virgo as well. Yeah, it's, it's, but the, then again, you got to also look at the Mars. Mars is, I can't forget this square right here, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't hurt you anything like this, but Mars is actually squared George's uh, Neptune and Chiron. It's, it's quite amazing. Now, when we look at the Declaration of Pendants, here's the, here is the seventh, here's the uh, Ascendant Sagittarius. And then Gemini and Uranus. Now we're going to look at this event. Now remember, the U.S. chart is Thursday the fourth. Thursday is actually a Jupiter day, and then we have and Jupiter rules travel. And then we have the fourth of July, which is a Cancer sign. And then we have 1776 at 510 local. Right. So when we look at this. For the planets of this moment to actually marry up to this would be only an act of God. There would be a no other way. And to see all these planets hooked together to the th to, to the president, to the president, but also to the birthday, which happened 1776, it's only an act of God. I'm going to show you this. Here's George W. Bush right here. This is where Saturn would be, and what have you. This is the attack member. Look how it all hooks up. And then we go to scroll down here to the next chart. Here it is. Now look at the chart. 17, Sagitt 17 degrees, sorry, 1776. We have Sagittarius at 12 degrees. Okay. We have Pluto sitting across from Uranus. But when we look at the planets here, the sun is at 18 degrees Virgo. Okay, where's that sun at? 18 degrees Virgo. It's very close to Neptune. In George's Neptune, okay, at 22 degrees. Now we look at, and then we look at the sun at 18 degrees. It's actually squared George's Mars at 21 degrees, right? 21 degrees Gemini. Remember the Saturn, where the Saturn was? Saturn's over here, really close. We have Uranus right at 88 degrees. His natal Uranus is at 8 degrees Gemini. And then we have Saturn, transit Saturn, at 14 degrees Gemini. I mean, what's the likelihood? And the ascendant being a Sagittarius, Sagittarius rules the chart. I mean, this is the, this is the chart right here. Now we look at the Declaration, you look at this. The U.S. Declaration of Independence is at 12 degrees 21 minutes. And we scroll down, this is the attack here, right? 
it's so it's so amazing that these planets would be here Mars is sitting here look at Mars Mars at 21 degrees uh, I mean the, the transit Mars here is at one degrees Capricorn right one degrees Capricorn that's a tr that's opposed the US Venus the US Jupiter and the Sun right there I mean and then the, and the and the moon is right there conjunct with Venus I mean, and then Jupiter, look at where Jupiter is. Jupiter is at 11 degrees Capricorn, and it's almost 12 degrees, right? And here's the sun at 13 degrees. What is the likely of the, of the lineups being so perfectly and the planets doing what they're supposed to do? Jupiter is opposed Mars on Venus, right? It's an op, it's a opposition. Jupiter, uh, Mars is the god of war, and Jupiter rules the planes that are flying through the air, and Mars rules the metal of the planes. And then we look at Neptune again. The sun is right there at the top. And the sun is highlighting Neptune. And Neptune is the fuel slodge. The fuel slodge is filled with fuel. And the sun is going to heat it up, right? And then what is, it, what is Neptune doing? Neptune is at 22 degrees, squaring, 20, squaring Mars. And then Saturn, Saturn is is basically the Grim Reaper, and with his sickle, he's lighting the thing on fire. I mean, it's it's so obvious, especially with all these con right there. And it's right after the star. The star of Bethlehem happened right there in the fifth house, you know, of the U.S., right there in the fifth house. That's where the star happened. We'll go back to the chart. Okay, here we go. Look at the tower. Here's George. Yeah, this is the sinistry chart. Look, look and look at the um, look at Taurus. Taurus is his tenth house. Taurus is his tenth house, right? That's where the star was. And right when I find the star, where where did it go? It flew away from me. I'm gonna scroll this up here. Yeah, the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction. So once again, we have Jupiter and Saturn at twenty-two degrees. We have the Senate Cancer, Huron, Uranus, and it all fits together when you actually look at that conjunction with the other charts. It just, it's, it's unfamiliar. I mean, it's crazy how much it all connects together. I mean, you look at where the placements are. But I've left, the, I've left these charts for you and showed you my own personal interpretation. I appreciate you sitting with me on this. Um, it's fascinating when you see charts of different time periods all linking to one moment and lining up perfectly for what the planet's supposed to do, interpretation. Thank you very much for uh, sharing this time with me, and I hope you um, had this experience of enlightenment that I have had researching these dates in history with the pressure of the planets rotating around the sun each and every day. All the best, and I wish you the most for the year that 2020 holds for us. See you next time on episode three. Looking at Ronald Reagan. All the best. We're currently